Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So for today's tutorial I thought we'd do a summery necklace in polymer clay. Held together by wires with a nice sort of pattern on the back as well. I will take you through step by step everything you need to know to create this necklace. Many years back when I first started working with polymer clay this was the sort of thing I did, these sort of slabs of designs and then cut away to create jewellery and I had great fun doing them. So I thought I'd go back to my polymer clay roots and show you how I'd make something along these lines. So just relax, enjoy, sit back and watch as the process unfolds and then have a go at making one yourself. So let's start with the equipment we need for today's session. For today's project I'm using a polymer clay blade, I often refer to these as tissue blades, a craft knife, a cable needle, this is a 4mm one, just something along those lines will work equally well, a cocktail stick can come in handy, a little polymer clay roller, this one is half an inch 1.25 centimetres in width, a brayer roller is also quite handy. I'm going to be using a little liquid polymer clay and I've just decanted some into a small pot here for ease of use. For what we're doing today, if you don't have any liquid polymer clay, then PVA glue would work instead. When I'm burnishing, I use a stainless steel soap and I've got a sheet of wax paper that will go over our pattern sheet to burnish. For the template today, I'm using this one, which is from Polymer Clay UK Tools, and this is in set number 24. And the reason I like this one is because it not only gives you um, the outer shape, and I've actually left the plastic covering on this because I like it that you can then see exactly um, the area you're cutting out, but it also comes with all the little inserts, and for these I have taken the plastic off, um, but they're very handy because obviously they sit inside, so when you want to cut round things you can use those, and when you want to see the shape of what you're doing, you can use the big one. As always, I'm using one of these measuring sheets that is freely downloadable from www.printablepaper.net. I simply laminate mine so I can use it multiple times, and this one is the four squares to an inch one, but you can also print out a centimetre one if you prefer. The wire I'm using today is 0.6 millimetres. This is actually from the jewellery maker, but any wire, any of the jewellery wire will work. And also you can get coloured ones. I'm just using silver for today's session. And to cut it, I've got some um, wire cutters. I'll be using a texture on the back. And this one is Garden Glory Texture by Lisa Pavelka. And I'm just going to use a little bit of cornflour or cornstarch, which is just wrapped up in a piece of cotton, um, tied with elastic band, and it just helps a little bit of the powder onto the texture sheet so it doesn't stick to the clay. And this was a tip from Melanie Muir, which I've been using ever since. And the trouble is, once you get given these tips, it's very difficult to then work without them because they are so good. So Melanie, thank you so much. It's a fantastic tip. And when we've finished with our texture and we've finished baking the piece, I'm going to add some of this Gilders paste. This particular brand is called Goldfinger. Other brands are available. And it's just the silver one and we just brush it on with our finger. As always, I'm working on a large tile and I bake on a smaller tile and we do actually need a tile to bake on. So the one I'm working on today is about 6 inches, 15 centimetres square, which is perfect for the size that we are doing. I will also use biodegradable wet wipes and tissues to clean and wipe my hands as we go. And I also use a pasta machine dedicated to polymer clay use. If you do not have a pasta machine, you can get stacks of playing cards, lay them on either side of your clay, use a roller over the top and get different thicknesses for the type of clay or the thickness of clay you want and I'll put in the details below the various settings on my pasta machine I'm using and what the relevant card settings are for those. And to finish off the piece today I've just gone for a very simple ribbon that you can literally tie around the back of your neck and then we'll need some wire cutters and some round nosed wire and pliers just so we can create a little loop to put the ribbon onto. I use some of this cling film or plastic wrap and when I bake I always always tent my piece in aluminium foil and do it in such a way that it goes over the top of the clay so it doesn't touch the clay but it just helps then should the oven spike during baking it helps protect the clay. That's it for the equipment so let's move on to the clay we're using. For today's project I'm going to be using Fimo Soft but all recognised brands of polymer clay will work equally well with this technique. The colours and amounts I've got are in the Fimo Soft, obviously just use um, alternates in whichever brand of clay you are using. So for the colours we've got Apple Green, Mint, Agate Blue, Peppermint and Brilliant Blue. And for those we've got 7 grams or a quarter an ounce of the green and the blue. 
and then 14 grams or half an ounce of the mint, the agate and the peppermint. We're then going to do a little blend between these two colours, so this is white and lilac, and we're also going to use a little bit of the plum in with those. For each of, each of these amounts we've got the same, so the 7 grams, um, quarter of an ounce of clay. So the plum's going to also be going to with the leaf cane, and the leaf cane's going to be tropical green, lemon yellow and white. And then we're going to use the stalks with the olive green. So this one is the same as these, so the 7 grams, quarter of an ounce. But these ones are smaller, so half that size, so about 3.5 grams, about an eighth of an ounce of each of these. So I'll get all of the clay conditioned in their separate colours first and if you're unsure about conditioning polymer clay then I do have a tutorial with a few hints, tips and techniques on that and I'll put a link to that in the description below this one. I will get all of my clays conditioned and I do that using a pasta machine and I'll get them conditioned and put them through on setting number three which is a medium setting on my pasta machine and on my pasta machine naught is thick and nine is thin. So I'll get all those colours conditioned and we'll start by doing the petal cane. We're going to start with the petal cane, very simple Skinner blend between these two colours and then a little bit of the purple we'd add in later so put that on one side to start with. And as per normal, I'm just going to cut diagonally down through the two. I do want a little bit of each colour to show, so I haven't gone right up to the corners. So that when I put these two together, and put them together like that, I will still have all of white on one side and all of the lilac on the other. A little bit of a roll. And then I'm just going to pick them up, put them together pinch at the, at the end and because I've got four layers now I'm going to put them through at one setting thicker so setting number two of my pasta machine that way through and simply fold bottom to top each time till we end up with a nice blend from one end through to the other. For anyone who's new to Skinner Blends I do have a tutorial with a few hints, tips and techniques on how to get a good Skinner Blend and I'll put a link to that in the video description below. So I'll get that done and bring you back when we have the nice blend. When the blend's complete, I'm just going to cut it, or you could always fold it into two pieces, put one on top of the other, pinch the darker ends and put it through dark end first, through the same setting of the pasta machine, which in my case is still setting number two, and that will give me a longer, thinner piece. I now want as long and thin a piece as I can get, so for me I'm going to put it through darker end first on my thinnest usable setting, which is setting number nine. If you know your pasta machine, can't cope with going from a thick setting down to a thin setting then just work down one setting at a time until you do get to your thinnest usable setting. And all we're going to do now is to roll up from the darker end towards the light and when I'm rolling I'm just trying to make sure there's no air trapped so I'm keeping it nice and tight. Having got our plug of clay we're just going to cut it down into quarters. Don't worry if they're not overly neat this is a petal cane we are making, so it doesn't matter if one slice is different to the next. Having got that, we're simply going to take one side and fold up. Do the same around the other side, either up in the air or down on the tile, whichever you find easiest. And then press in across the bottom so you get a thinner piece. Repeat for two pieces. Put those two together and then repeat for the other two. Press all four pieces together just at the bottom for now. And I'm going to turn it on its side and press along the side just to make it taller. And then when we've done that, now I'm going to just press across the middle just to create more of a triangular shape. And then I'm going to chop in half those two pieces together we see the pattern start to emerge and then I'm going to take a very thin slice this is still on setting number three so I'm going to take a piece that's the same width as my piece there but put it down onto my thinnest setting so for me setting number nine and then I'm just going to take a tiny little piece for 
probably about a third of an inch, just under a centimetre. Just place it across the middle. And what will happen is that will just create a little darker centre as we now press down, flatten the sides again, pinch across the top. If your ends start to become distorted, you can just turn it on flat onto the end of the tile and press down. And that means that when you cut down, it's easier to cut into equal parts. And then just one last time. Same again. Put it straight. Cut in half. And put the two pieces together. So we've just got the very smallest amount of purple showing, but it will show up when we have our finished petal. You could, of course, have stopped that at one of the earlier stages if you prefer and have more of it showing, but I quite like it when you've got all those stripes going. So all I'm going to do now is we need to reduce this down to it's really quite small, and the easiest ways to reduce canes are either in rounds, squares, or in triangles. Um, I'm going to reduce this one down in a square because it's going to be easier for the end shape of the petal we're going to go for. So all I'm doing is pushing my fingers together like that to creating more of a square shape. And once you've got it starting to go square you can turn it on its side and then just by pressing in it will automatically start to go longer. So once I've got it probably about three inches, I'll take off just over an inch because we need hardly any. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I will continue doing it and making this one piece smaller. And if we need any more, we can go back to this. But leaving this one larger means you can always reuse it for other projects. So all I'm going to do now is just carry on. You can either do it on tile or up in the air. Just constantly pressing it in that same shape until I get it really quite nice and small. And the thing about this technique, where we're going to lay slices on top and then roll them in, is that they always spread larger and wider. So always make your cane smaller than you think you want your finished pattern to be. Again, when it gets to probably about four inches, I'm going to chop one piece off because it's easier to work on a smaller piece. And now we can start to press in just down the sides and that will give us a nicer petal shape. So have a look, see if that's going to be the size you want to say, bearing in mind that it's going to go larger. I'm probably going to go slightly smaller, so to do that again I'm just going to use my fingers, the white at this side, the purple at that side, and just press it in smaller. Turn over, do the same from the other end, because it's easier to work from the top down, and then again we'll just spread or push in along the sides to give us more of a petal shape. You can always, if you want to, just roll it gently on the tile as well, just to round off that shape. And then take a little slice off, see what you've got, and whether you're happy with what you're going to have with the pattern that you've got. And now we're going to do exactly the same with the leaf cane. So we're going to have the green into the yellow into the white. So this time it's a three-way Skinner blend. So for that, I'll cut across the ends diagonally, but in the middle straight. Put them together like that. That one goes across the diagonal. And then that one just sits on the end. Again, give it a bit of a roll. And as you can see, I'm not worried about this not being completely rectangular because I know when I put it through the pasta machine, yellow one. When I put it through the pasta machine it's going to become distorted anyway and I can use the pasta machine and use the techniques I know to create it into a nice oblong whilst I'm putting it through the pasta machine. So exactly the same as before I'm going to put it through until I get a nice blend from the green through to the white and then we're going to do exactly the same as we did for the petal cane. So I'm going to cut it in two I'm going to put it, pinch the ends, put it back through on setting number two to get myself a longer, thinner strip and then go down to my thinnest usable setting. Once we've done that, we're going to start rolling it up from the white end down to the green end. Mm -hmm. 
and then again exactly the same before cut into quarters pinch them and put them together so that all four pieces are there and then press them flat on the sides We now want to turn this into more of a leaf cane, so the first thing we want to do is to change the orientation because at the moment the stripes are going that way. So we're going to do that just by pressing over so you can see that I've just sort of pulled this bit that way and pulled that bit that way and then we're going to chop it into two so you can see there how that's changed and then we're going to take a piece of the purple and I've put all that was left of the purple back through the pass machine on a thinnish setting so this is setting number six on my machine take a piece that's as wide as our pieces drop one end off and we're going to start this about where that green is put the other piece on top and pull over both sides and then we're going to use this to wrap all the way around the outside. So exactly the same as before, we're going to reduce this in a square format and by keeping that bit horizontal, so when you press down between your fingers, that's going to be going that way. We will reduce this down in a square format in exactly the same way and get pretty much the same size as we did with our petal cane. Once we've got it to the size we want, I'm just going to press down and um, blunt off the points on the sides and then both the top and the bottom of the leaf can be more pointed so I'm just pressing in all along, along the edges. Again, turn up the other way, start from the other end and go back down until you meet and then we'll see what we have got. And so there you have some little leaves. So those are our two elements all ready to go. So again, we'll put that on one side and rest it. And now we'll start making the background. So there's all the colours for our Skinner blend. And we're going to blend all the way through to those colours. So it gives a rough sort of representation, almost like um, of ground going into sky in our finished piece. So as per normal, I'm just going to do a little diagonal line through the end pieces straight down the middle and then we'll fit them all together. And exactly the same way as before, I'm going to put that back through setting number two and keep putting it back, folding it top to bottom so I end up with a nice blend from one side to the other. One thing I am going to be aware of though is that I only want the blend to be sort of from this height to this height. So I will bear that in mind when I'm putting it through the pasta machine and keep it quite short by making sure I push it up against one side of the pasta machine by pressing the other side in so that we end up with a piece that's just right to take our shape. As I was going through, I kept testing it with the template um, until I worked out that I had got the dark blue all the way down to the green. So this is on setting number two. Um, because we are going to be putting two layers, a back side and a front side, I don't need it on setting number two, so I can go on setting number three. So we'll see how much that gives us. So it actually gives me that much, which is fantastic, because what I'm looking for is a bit that's big enough to fit on twice, and it will. So I'm going to put that on there, do a tiny little mark there, so I know that if I chop it somewhere like that, just do a double check, yep, that will give me what I need to do the shape and I've still got enough left to do the back. So put the bit for the back to one side for now. From this point on I'm going to work on my measuring sheet because it's easier to pull it off afterwards, so I'm just going to put it down to make sure it's nice and flat. So, next thing to do is to take the little piece of the darker green 
and this is going to be our stems or our branches and so you're just going to roll it up get it nice and soft and there's way more here than you need so just pull off a small piece and all you're going to do is just going to roll it until you get some really thin fine pieces it's up to you how fine you want if you have an extruder we'd rather use that and absolutely use that if pieces break off that is fine you can either roll them even smaller or you can use them as little sort of small branches now I've already done some from earlier so here are my pieces so I've got enough to get me going what I would suggest to start with is just to roughly mark in with a cocktail stick where you want these branches to go because you can always roll this out again um, to get it flat if you then make a mistake. So if we do something like that, 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 so I'm just giving myself a rough idea. And once I've done that, I'm actually going to dig in slightly deeper because I don't want the branches to spread out too much. And this way, you can set the clay into the groove. And I'm not worried about the fact that I've gone slightly over some of those lines because I know I'm about to um, burnish it all over at the end. If you want to do a bigger line, you can do a bigger line. With so I'll put the main ones in and then I'll add some round the outside too. So I've finished putting all the pieces in, I'm not going to bother pressing them in at this stage because we're going to do that afterwards, but that's as many as I want, so now we can go back to our little leaf cane. So the first thing I'm going to do is add on little leaves. So on my working sheet I'm just going to take as thin a slices as I can, so I'm just going to turn it this way up just purely for me so I can actually see what I'm doing, but obviously take them however you want to do. Now this is a really good project to practice taking your slices as thin as you want and if you cut little half slices you can always put them on and then overlap other ones on top of them so it looks like the leaves are on top of each other and I would suggest you do that to a certain extent anyway because if you just have them all sitting off by themselves it's not going to look very natural and the leaves would overlap each other. I will normally start from the top of a point and then work my way down um, and then I might even add a few more branches as I get down here depending on where the leaves are and how many I think I need to do. So I will probably take certainly about 40 or 50 slices to start with um, and then start adding them on wherever I think they need to go. So as you can see they really are quite thin if you can get them nice and thin. I'll finish taking my slices off camera but I'll have them all ready up here or listed down to the side because I find it easier to look right over the top when I'm taking my slices and of course if I do that you won't see what I'm doing so I'll bring you back when I'm done. The other thing that's useful to do is to hold the template up at this stage so you can see where things are going to go through and where the lines are. So for instance I can see that the whole of this doesn't get seen at all. So there's no point in me adding lots of leaves and lots of pattern up there. So have a look and I'm just going to probably take a little sort of a, a bit of a line and do something like that. And also just from these corners. So that I know not to waste lots of time and energy putting all my pattern in those areas because it's not going to get seen. So, other than that, it's just a case of adding the pieces on and creating your design.
and I think with that I am happy. So what I'm going to think about now is the same thing about the placement, is think about where I want the flowers to go. So what I'm going to do is with the tip of my um, cable needle just do little dots where I think I want the flowers to go because again they can always be taken out later on if we don't like where they are. But I'll just make sure I've got a nice coverage. I'll probably do. So I haven't made it even, I've just gone for where the gaps are in between my branches. And then I'm going to cut five petals for each flower. Now these are going to be quite what big compared to the leaves. Um, so again, have a look at the size you want and if you'd rather make them smaller, you can do. So I'll cut five off and then put them on and see if I like the look of them, but I might end up making them smaller. So let's start with one in the middle. So I'm going to put them just off to one side of where that dot is. And then let's put the template back on and have a look. No, in actual fact, I'm quite happy with the size of that. So I'll keep going. And for each one, I'll take off five slices. You can also, instead of doing the five, just do three slices, then have a little sort of um, one in bud where it's starting to come out. So I'll cut all my slices first and then bring you back as I start to put them on, but fast forward. There are all the open flowers and there's just a little bud if you want to do that. So I'm just going to put that back on, have a look, see if I'm happy with the way that looks. And yeah, I'm thinking that looks quite nice and summery and breezy. So I'm going to put a little centre to the flowers and I'm going to do that by taking off a little bit of this very light green. Roll it into a long thin strip. And then we're just going to add additional little dots in the middle of all the flowers. Take a small little round of the green and drop that in. And again, I'll do that to all of them. With all the piece finished and the ins and the middles of the flowers put in, I'm just going to get a little piece of wax paper, the tracing paper, baking paper, anything like that would do. And then I'm just going to, with my stainless steel soap, in very small round circles, just go over the whole thing, pressing it flat. Once I'd finished, I also went over the brayer roller, as you saw. If, like mine, your paper sort of creases and you get a crease line, then just find a flat piece, put it back over the top, and either with your finger or with the stainless steel soap, just go back over and get rid of any crease lines. I've now got a piece of cling film or plastic wrap, whatever you call it, and I'm just going to put that right over the top. Now, if you were using cutters, then you could cut down through that and it will give you a nice beveled edge. However, of course, today we haven't got a cutter, We've got a template so you can still get a bit of a beveled edge even on a template and this is where these particular templates are so good because i've got the inserts for all these pieces so i can put my piece exactly where i want it on my place get the design just as i like it then put all the inserts in remove the template and cut around the inserts so i've removed the wrapping paper from the um, inside pieces because this is the difference because I like to be able to see the pattern by having it masked off on the big piece but when you're using the little pieces it's quite handy to have that so you can see through them so I should now hopefully be able to remove the template and have all the clear pieces left in place so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to very carefully just press lightly on each one and then with the blunt side of my craft knife just mark the outside of each of the pieces. So 
So I can now remove my pieces and see where all the lines are. And I can now go back down again with the blunt side of my craft knife, just pressing down. And because you've got the cling film plastic wrap, it just pulls it down just that little bit for you as you go down. And now you've got it done as much as you can with that beveled edge with the actual point of the craft knife you can go back down through and cut all the way down. And now take away the cling film and you should be able to peel away When you look, you should see that it has just pulled that pattern down around the edge for you. You may need to go back in with your craft knife and just neaten off a few bits and pieces, but you, as you pull them up, you can have a look. So we've got the rest of the blend we did, and we know it's the right size to fit on. So I'm going to use this texture sheet, and just add that onto the texture sheet, and that should stop the texture sheet sticking your polymer clay. It just gives a light, nice light dusting of corn flour or cornstarch. So I'm going to press that over, turn it round and then just with my hands just press down to get the nice texture onto the polymer clay. Take the sheet off. that we've got enough that's going to cover over the whole piece and then because I want this to stick to the bottom of the um, tile and because we've now got a little bit of powder on it I'm just going to with a wet wipe just wipe over the surface and then remove this from the measuring sheet I'm just going to roll it over to make sure there's no traps there It'll also show me any other little cracks so I can just roll those over and then we can take our template, as before. Having got your piece nicely sorted on the um, tile, which we're going to bake on, I just need to mark where I want the wire to go. So I'm just going to use a ruler and very gently lay it down along each of the flat sides and just mark half a centimetre and a centimetre and I'll do that down every flat edge. Going to take a little bit of liquid polymer clay you could use pva glue instead if you don't have any of that and just along these lines where the wire is going to go i'm just going to put some little bit of liquid clay just to help it adhere i've cut myself two pieces of the wire and i've used the template um, to give myself roughly the right sort of curve that I want to go. One piece goes right out through both ends, the other piece is just going to sit and just go as far as the two end pieces. So once you've got them done, and I've also made sure they're as flat as they can be by pressing them down on the work surface because we want them nice and flat. We can then transfer over to our piece and checking on where the little lines are, little points I made, they're going to sit on top of all of those and then come out the middle of both ends. Once you've got the first one roughly in place, you can just press down so it actually digs down into that bottom layer. And then 
sit the second piece in place. Spend a bit of time making sure it's nice and neat and even. Chop off any excess and then once it's in place again press that down. Now we need to transfer our pieces from here onto here. Lay them on top towards the top so that if there's any excess it's towards the bottom and you can easily and carefully remove it with your craft knife. So go around, tidy up any pieces that need doing. Once it's all tidied up and ready I tent the whole thing in a piece of aluminium foil so that the foil doesn't touch the clay as it bakes but the foil just helps protect the clay should the oven spike during the baking process and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. And I'll bring you back when that's all done and baked. Once the piece is cooled from the oven, just cut off the excess of the wire and with the round nose pliers just create a loop which with any luck will sit more or less into the piece of clay that the other piece has exited from. And repeat for the other side which I've already done. It's then up to you whether or not you want to put anything on the back. So I've lost a little bit of texture on a couple of these pieces, but I think I will still put the Gilders paste on just to show you. Completely up to you whether or not you want to. The other reason I'm putting it on is because I am going to varnish this piece once the Gilders paste has gone off. And by that I just mean it's dried and you can sort of buff it um, with a polishing cloth. Again it's up to you whether you varnish or not, but say just having a little bit of the gilders paste on the underneath just adds to that pattern. So say I will let that dry. Once that's dried, the last thing I'm going to do is just add a, a layer of the Fimo varnish. This is the non, although it says gloss, it's actually not glossy unless you put sort of two or three coats on. And I like the fact that if I just put one coat on, it'll effectively just um, hold all the gilders paste in place and then it won't rub off against the skin or the clothes. And it's up to you whether you put anything on the front. I think I'm going to leave the front completely clear because I quite like it as it is. But that's safe. that's completely up to you. I'm going to finish the piece very simply just by adding some ribbon to either side and then just effectively leave it so you can tie it around your um, neck at the back. Of course you can do whatever finishing technique you want on it. So I've folded the ribbons in half at the midpoint, going through from the front to the back, open it up, put the ribbons through the loop and then very carefully close the loop up around the wire. And there we are, there's our finished piece. A summery necklace in polymer clay. And obviously you can do it in loads of other colourways and loads of other patterns. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and as always a special thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see you next time when I bring out my new video. That's it for now. Bye. <laughs>